John Carl Stanton is entering maybe the weirdest year of his career. This isn't a year where John Carl Stanton is expected to perform well, but if he doesn't, he may lose his job. The Yankees have a lot of outfield prospects, headlined by Jason Dominguez and Spencer Jones, and the additions of guys like Trent Grisham, Alex Verdugo, and of course Juan Soto will certainly place a lot of pressure on John Carl Stanton to perform well, and not just throughout the season, but early, because this is a make it or break it season, not just for the Yankees, but for John Carl Stanton as well. Sure, he still has four years remaining on his mega contract that he originally signed with the Miami Marlins, but it's not impossible for the Yankees to cut ties with him either during or after the season if he doesn't perform up to par and other prospects or other players in the organization take steps forward. The Yankees are hoping to have a long-term duo in Aaron Judge and Juan Soto, and as mentioned earlier, Spencer Jones and Jason Dominguez are both highly coveted prospects by the organization. The window is closing for John Carl Stan to figure it out, and today we'll talk about the pressure he's got this year, what you could expect from him, and some of the tweaks he needs to make in order to have an impactful 2024 season. John Carl Stanton is such an interesting player for so many reasons. The OBP has completely gone away. He's a guy who used to have a really high OBP and hit for a pretty decent average. And that just hasn't been the case in the last few years. And you could attribute the statistical decline of John Carl Stanton, at least offensively, to the lack of average in OBP. And that's come with a decrease in line drive rate and an increase in pop-up and infield fly ball rates. Now, I'm not sitting here and saying that it's a simple fix. Fixing your launch angle is something that is extremely difficult to do, and that has something to do with bat path, and it's a very fine mechanical tweak that you have to make. And look, Stan mentioned making changes to his swing, and I know he's not having a great spring training, but quite honestly, I don't really care. Uh, And I understand that it's something that is way more complicated than just looking at fan graphs and looking at batted ball splits and saying just hit more line drives I'm sure he's aware of his issues I'm sure the Yankees are aware of those issues and I'm sure he and the Yankees have done everything in their power to try to fix them but this season is a make or break year he has to fix those issues this year because if you look at his defensive and base running value none of it warrants having him even on your roster he doesn't play defense at all and when he does it's not very good his base running value is not even non-existent it's straight up one of the worst in the league and it completely takes away from your offense at some point John Carlos Stanton becomes more trouble than he's worth in terms of player value but I think that there are some things he can tweak to at least get himself in a rhythm and get himself kicking early first and foremost he's got to continue to hit the ball hard that's something he's always done but I think the emphasis on hitting the ball hard is something that people think he should stay away from. No, he he should continue to hit the ball hard. If he doesn't hit the ball hard, if he's not doing damage, if he's not generating uh, contact like that, he's not going to have success. I don't care what his average looks like. It's just not going to happen. But looking at the situation with his swing and looking at the situation with his launch angle, he's going to need to generate contact that results in hits more often. That may come with just hitting more line drives. And trust me, John Carlos Stanton hits the ball hard enough for his line drives and his fly balls to go for hits or for home runs. But he's going to have to generate that contact more often. And he's probably going to have to pull the ball in the air a little bit more. He's always been a guy who doesn't have to do that. But if he can, it'll probably result in more of his fly balls turning into extra base hits and home runs. But ultimately, the big thing here is that the bat can't just be all right. It can't be just above average. It can't just be good. It has to be great. He had a good WRC plus in 2022. He was about 18% better than the league average, and yet he still only put up 1.2 war. Now, 1.2 war for $22 million is below market value, and I'm using $22 million because that's a luxury tax hit that Stan has. The Marlins are paying a portion of his contract still, so I'm not going to use that $30 million price tag, but again, it's a $22 million hit for 1.2 war. That's not cutting it. And this past season, it was a negative 0.8 war with an 89 WRC plus. He was a below average hitter and obviously still remained a below average defender and a below average base runner. And looking at his war value with the Yankees, he's really only been good enough in the metric twice. In 2018, when he put up a 4.2 war and 2021, where he put up a 2.6 war. Everything in between has either been not good enough because of injury or at least in the last two years, not good enough because of the performance when he's actually healthy and if you look at his postseason resume it's obviously phenomenal and you understand that a great John Carlos Stanton is probably going to put up great numbers in the postseason but if you don't get that version of Stanton you can't just expect him to get better when he's facing better competition and in my opinion John Carlos Stanton could very easily become more trouble than he's worth at least on the field in terms of his player value projections think he'll be better this year and they think he'll be an above average hitter but even the most optimistic projections and the most optimistic one is the bat x with a 115 wrc plus has him posting just a 1.1 war on the year 
just like a 1.2 war wouldn't cut it, a 1.1 war won't cut it either. And looking at some of the Yankees' other players on their roster, whether it's at the minor league level or major league level, they have Trent Grisham, who was consistently around a two-war player and an excellent defensive center fielder with the power to maybe be a solid hitter at Yankee Stadium. They have Alex Verdugo, who's also coming off a year he would like to forget, but at least defensively and contact-wise, he provides you something. Jason Dominguez is a very interesting prospect and has a ton of upside and could very well become a middle-of-the-lineup threat for this team for the next decade. He makes excellent swing decisions. He has great game power. He has great raw power. He has improving contact skills. The plate discipline, again, is remarkable. He's a great athlete. He can run the base extremely well, and this team could use that. And the other prospect we would want to talk about is Spencer Jones, who is one of the most exciting prospects in all of baseball and has ridiculous upside and could be up at some point next year or maybe even early this year, uh, or late this year, excuse me, uh, if something were to break his way. I don't think that the New York Yankees should look at Spencer Jones as a guy to call up this year particularly, but it's definitely possible. And looking at Jason Minguez, his return seems like an inevitability. The Yankees really like Jason Minguez. They really like Spencer Jones. And once you factor in the addition of Juan Soto, you've got a crowded outfield. You have an outfield that no longer has room for John Carlos Stanton, and that's including the DH spot. If the Yankees were to keep Spencer Jones, Jason Minguez, Juan Soto, and Aaron Judge, that's three outfielders and a DH. They'll probably rotate Judge and Soto through the DH spot. Judge because of that toe thing that he's going to have to still manage. And Soto because he's just not a great defender. And you throw out your young athletes and Jones and Dominguez in center field and left field respectively. There is no position for John Carl Stan at that point. He's not a better hitter than Soto. He's not a better hitter than Judge. And Dominguez and Jones are going to be playing the outfield every day. It's not like he can sub in for them in left field. And he definitely can't sub in in center field. So this is really the year for him to prove it. This is the year where he can kind of force the Yankees hand a little bit and make them not want to be as aggressive with their prospect usage because Stanton is right there. And again, that's not even factoring the fact that Grisham has another year of eligibility on his contract. And while Verdugo is a free agent at the end of the year, he's here for this year. And that's still going to be a log jam to talk about. You just have to replace Jones with Verdugo in this hypothetical, and he's still got a crowded outfield. So this is a big year for John Carlos Stan. And I don't necessarily believe he's going to have a great year. If you ask me, I think my expectations for him are to be all right and solid enough, but not really play well enough to earn that spot on the roster. I mentioned projections. These projection systems also believe the Yankees are going to be pretty good. Pakoda thinks the Yankees are going to win the division pretty handedly. Fangraphs has depth charts and Zips. Depth charts believes the Yankees will win the division, and Zips thinks the Yankees are going to finish a game behind the Orioles. And that was before the injuries to Kyle Bradish and John Means, so I wonder if that shifted a little bit. But my big point here is that the Yankees are in the thick of the AL East race. They're considered one of the best teams in the American League, if not all of baseball. But none of that is because they think John Carlos Stanton's going to bounce back. In fact, a lot of these projection systems, if not all of them, believe if the Yankees bounce back, it'll be in spite of John Carlos Stanton. They think it's a very hard to believe outcome for him to go out and be a very productive player. And I think that's an expectation Yankee fans need to settle into, but also something that Stan can use as a chip on his shoulder. Stan's a guy who's usually laser focused and is a very accountable guy, but even he mentioned it himself. It doesn't do anything for your offensive or defensive or base running abilities. And he's going to have to start performing again. Health is another big question mark here. He played less games in 2023 than he did in 2022. He played fewer games in 2022 than he did in 2021. So that's a steady three-year decline in games played. And I'm not necessarily sure he's going to be able to play more than 110 games this year if we're being generous. And if Stan were to miss time and a guy like Dominguez were to emerge, that's it. That's the window. That's that window closing. If Dominguez comes into the lineup when he comes back from injury and immediately hits while Stan's on the IL, let's say, that window is closed. The window for Stanton is very short. It's shorter than people think. It's not until October rolls around. It's probably until Dominguez gets back. If it's June 1st and John Carl Stanton has an 89 WRC plus and Jason Dominguez is back from injury, it would be really hard to rationalize not playing Dominguez over Stanton. Hell, it would be really hard to rationalize playing Stanton over Grisham. So the question lies in how much of a leash the Yankees are going to give him. Personally, I give him about two months. I think the months of April and May are the two months where you have to let him just kind of play and see what happens at the end. When you look up at the scoreboard in June, if the average OBP slugging and home run numbers are all there, you're happy. Even if he's a full-time DH, even if the base running still isn't great, I know he slimmed down a little bit and is hoping to play some outfield, but I don't really care about his defense and base running. I just need him to hit a little bit. I've kind of waved away the idea that he'll ever be the st defender he was in Miami or even the base runner he was in Miami, but I do believe it's possible he can hit again. And that's kind of the big point of this video. The point of this video isn't me telling you John Carl Stan's going to bounce back. Get ready for the John Carl Stan revenge tour. It's more so to tell you that 
John Carl Stanton's probably not going to be that good this year. And those are the expectations that are going to be set on him. And those are the expectations he's kind of deserved. And that the Yankees are also justified in giving him a leash because end of the day, they have to give him a leash. They have to know what they have in Stanton. And there's still that chance that he's a productive major league player. But the Yankees have to temper their expectations. They have the depth around him in Verdugo, Grisham, Dominguez, and maybe even Spencer Jones. A guy like Everson Pereira might even get mixed in there. They have depth in their outfield to kind of cover if Stanton isn't good enough. But the hope and the prayer is that he's able to hit, that he's able to iron out those issues with his launch angle, that he's able to iron out those issues with his you know, physical state or his health or whatever it may be, and be the productive player he was not even just three years or four years ago, the player he was in the first half in 2022. That's not too long ago, and it's still potentially in there. Look, the hiring of James Rosen should help him connect with his hitting coach a little bit more. There was a rift between the veterans and Dylan Lawson, and the offseason work he did is pretty dramatic. He lost a lot of weight, and he seems to be in a much better shape to play baseball. Time will tell what John Carlos Stan does for the Yankees, but in my opinion, I think that we're going to have to look at this season as a big question mark. He is not a guy you expect to bounce back. He's not a guy the Yankees are going to rely upon in order for them to win a lot of games this year, but he is a guy that could be a pleasant surprise, and who knows, maybe he gets his career on track, and he gets himself back into a Hall of Fame kind of conversation. I know one thing, winning a World Series with the Yankees and finishing your career strong will certainly boost those Hall of Fame chances. It completely rewrites the tenure of John Carlos Stanton in New York with the New York Yankees. And I would love to see him kind of rewrite that story and be remembered as one of the most beloved Yankees on the team instead of a guy who's constantly surrounded by question marks and controversy. Let us know what you guys think in the comment section below. You guys can check us out on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, and of course this YouTube page. Check out EmpireSportsMedia.com for all your favorite New York sports content. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.